please connect with us and our dynamic pastor for our Tuesday night prayer meeting. Yeah. Oh God, you said in your word we are like sheep, oh God, that are going to stray, yeah. Good afternoon, Fenimoreans. This is Sunday, August 16th. Welcome to our first time visitors and returning friends. I am Ava from the Fenimore Street United Methodist Church, located in Brooklyn, New York, where our pastor is the Reverend Dr. Maxine Nixon. I bring you greetings today, and I thank you for joining us, and we hope that you will come again. These are your notices and announcements for the week of August 16th. Our Sunday service is brought to you live at 12 noon via Facebook, YouTube, and Zoom. The service is, is recorded live for your viewing at a later time on Facebook and YouTube. Tuesday nights, we have a weekly prayer call at 8 p.m. Friday mornings, please join our pastor at 6 a.m. for morning prayer. From our pastor's desk, Fenimorians, we need your assistance to prepare the church for reopening. Please return the reopening survey, and if you have not received the survey or the link, please let us know by sending us an email. Volunteers are also needed to assist with the reopening. Please contact Sister Cynthia Grant or send your responses and your inquiries to info at fenimoreumc.org. Surveys should be in no later than August 28th. Your health and safety is our utmost priority, so we need to hear from you. September is fast approaching, and it's that, that time of year that we celebrate our Fenimore men. Please reach out to Brother Shafat Jack with your ideas, plans, concerns, and questions. Men, you have a vision and a mission. Mark your calendars. September 30th will be Men's Day. Our celebration, four scores plus a, plus a score plus two equals 92. This is the number of years that Brother Lester Jack celebrated on August 13th. Brother Jack is grateful and thankful for his life. Join me in wishing him a very happy birthday. And happy birthday to all members who are celebrating this month. Our condolences and prayers. Please pray for the Gooding family as they mourn for the loss of their mother, Sister Gooding. She passed away on August 11th. Also, please keep in prayer the family of Sister Sandra Solomon and Sister Joan Cox in the passing of their niece and sister, respectively. We offer comfort and condolences to both families at this time of bereavement and also continue to keep the Dallas family in prayer. From the media department, we are asking that all files and videos be emailed to the media department no later than Thursday. This would ensure that it would be included in the current week broadcast. Fenimorians, we need your support in our community. Matthew 25 verse 35. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. We are calling all Fenimoreans, all ministries. We are calling Family Life, Ladies in Waiting, Membership and Nurture, United Methodist Men and Women, Youth Ministry, and all other ministries not mentioned. Please contact Sister Joan Cox as soon as possible and offer your support as we Fenimoreans coordinate and pick up and distribute food in our community. Fenimoreans, make it your mission to reach out to fellow members. If you are aware of any member who is sick or has been in the hospital, please contact the church and share that information with our pastor. Finally, Send all your shout outs, your notices, announcements, prayer requests to info at fenimoreumc.org. 
please continue to send all your donations and tithes to the church or you can use the app give l i f y enjoy your summer vacation and continue to stay healthy and safe Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise, for it was grace that brought my liberty. I do not know just how He came to love me so. He looked beyond my faults and saw my need. If not for grace, my soul would be a drifting ship with no safe harbor from the angry waves. But Calvary's cross shines brightly through the darkest storm. And just in time, His mercy rescued me. I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary. To view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous the grace that caught my falling soul. He looked beyond my faults and saw my need. We are not here by luck or even just by chance. We're here to say Christ is our Lord and King. If you do not know Christ as your Lord and Savior yet, He look beyond your faults and see your need. I shall forever lift mine eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died to die for me. How marvelous My falling soul, he looked beyond my faults and saw my need. I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died. He died for me. How marvelous that grace that put my falling soul. He looked beyond my faults and he saw my Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're so glad to be here on today. We do honor the Lord and uh, we give God praise. 
This is the third Sunday in August. I am the Reverend Dr. Maxine Nixon, pastor of the Fenimore Street United Methodist Church. On today, we're going to celebrate the Lord's Day and we have a guest speaker. Our guest speaker is Sister Barbara Moody and she is one of our lay servants here at Fenimore. So I pray that you will just greet her with a hearty amen as she comes to break the bread of life. I'm sure she has a word that will bless your hearts on today. Enjoy the word of God. God bless you. Good afternoon, saints. It is just a joy and a privilege for me to be here with you today to share what God has to say to us today. I first would like to thank my pastor for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today, to bring the word that God has placed on my heart for you to hear it and for you to appropriate it to your lives. I thank God for his mercy and his grace and give him all the glory for keeping us safe throughout this pandemic that has really and truly caused havoc, not only in this country, but all over the world. So we must give God thanks and praise for answered prayers and for us to be constantly looking to him because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We praise you and we magnify your wonderful name. Because, Lord God, only you know how we are doing and what we are going through. And you know the beginning and you know the end. And we ask that as we gathered here today to worship you, God, we did not miss a beat in worshiping you, in making that closer relationship with you possible. Because we all find ourselves at home with more time to spend with you. So Father God, I ask that you will open ears and open eyes and open hearts so that they may receive your word that you have set forth today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I'd like to, to share with you the scripture lesson that I've chosen for today. It's found in Luke 19, verses 1 to 10. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector. And he was rich, and he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half my goods to the poor, and if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to the house because he also is a son of Abraham. To this, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. My topic for today is K 
catching a life-changing glimpse of Jesus. Catching a life-changing glimpse of Jesus. The story of Zacchaeus is told only in the Gospel of Luke, verses, sorry, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Most of us as children attended Sunday school, and most certainly one of the most popular Bible stories was the one about Zacchaeus. We even had a song with a catchy tune that told the story to us as children. Zacchaeus was described as short, but some Bible scholars also described him as being young. What made Zacchaeus decide to climb a tree to see Jesus? You will agree that the act was not very dignified, but he must have decided that Jesus was worth the effort to catch a glimpse of Jesus. He didn't realize at the time how his life would be changed. He decided to put himself in a position where the Lord could speak to him. For that, all Zacchaeus did was to climb a tree for Jesus. That's all it took, climbing a tree. Would you climb a tree to, or do some other outlandish action for Jesus? To what length would you go if you knew Jesus would be passing by in your neighborhood? Imagine Jesus looking around or looking up, and the very moment he approached where you were among the crowd, or perhaps in a tree also, he calls out to you by name. He's coming to your home for dinner. Can you imagine the checklist rambling in your mind at this time? Is the house clean? Check. Can you prepare a meal? Check. How should I address him? Can you... Am I worthy to be in his presence? And the question comes one after the other. Which person in the Bible are you reminded of? I'm thinking about Martha when Jesus went to visit Martha and Lazarus and her sister Mary. And they, Martha was very upset because Mary was not helping. She got very busy, and I think we would be doing the same, just wanting to make everything right for Jesus' visit. Jesus is purposeful. He always has a plan. He had his reasons why Zacchaeus was noticed and called out to him. And we are told that he received Jesus joyfully. Zacchaeus' story invites us to ask ourselves, what are we doing to catch that same life-changing glimpse? Jesus is beckoning to us and wants to dine and talk with us. Are we putting off saying yes to Jesus? Remember, tomorrow is not promised to anyone. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. I don't think there is any doubt that Zacchaeus had heard about Jesus and wanted to see him for himself. But I don't think he thought in his wildest dream that Jesus would not only notice him, but would spend time with him at his home. So I'll ask the question again. To what lengths are you willing to go to know Jesus? An encounter with Jesus could be just what you need. Let's say you need it right now.
at this very moment. We have stories in the Gospels that tell us all we need to know about Jesus. But you know, as well as I do, that our biggest hindrance is we do not read the Bible. At least, I don't think we read it enough. And it is God's word. I'd like to share with you a little testimony. I didn't understand when I read such verses as in Psalm 119, 103, that says, How sweet are your words to my taste. Yes, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I'd like to share with you that I have actually experienced that sweetness of his word. And it brings to memory another verse that says, Oh, taste and see how gracious the Lord is. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. I can tell you it has brought joy, peace, and contentment to my heart. Yes, his word is all that and then some. You can find out his promises to us for every situation in life. And guess what? The Bible says that they are sure, they are yea and amen. Would you allow me to share with you a few promises that may fit a situation you are going through? You may recognize this one very well. No weapons formed against you shall prosper. Found in Isaiah 54, 17. God is my refuge and strength. Found in Psalm 46. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Psalm 27, 1. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. That's found in Philippians 4, 6, and verse 7. I say, don't, in Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7, it says, don't fear, for I have not I will, but I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. All these promises are made only to those who believe in and put their trust in Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is not like a genie where you can use him whenever you need him. He is the creator of the world, no less. He is our Savior. Make sure you are attached to him. For it says in his word that he is the vine and we are the branches. And if we are connected to him, we will bear much good fruit. That is if we are feeding off him. Let's get back to Zacchaeus. I really believe he did not only want to see Jesus better physically, he was seeking something more, a spiritual transformation. But now let's look at how the Bible portrays Zacchaeus. He was a chief publican, rich, a sinner, and worst of all, a tax collector. Publicans were hired by the Romans to collect taxes from the Jews, and many of them cheated the people and collected more than they should. And they were hated for this practice. He was a chief collector in Jericho and was also a descendant of Abraham. If you look at Luke 19.9, you will read all about that. In previous stories in Luke, you will find Jesus being in the company of rich tax collectors and sinners which caused quite a stir among the crowd when Jesus beckoned to Zacchaeus to come down 
the crowd murmuring grew even louder. But the, didn't Jesus know that Zacchaeus was a sinner? But if you look through the Gospel of Luke, Jesus consistently wanted to make the people aware of the reason he came. And that was to save sinners. In Luke 19.10, it says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Being a child of Abraham, Zacchaeus had took a job as tax collector, and he was lost, as he too was engaged in thievery. He needed a savior. To bring him back to the status of being a child of Abraham, he said it would be hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And that is found in Luke 3, verse 8. Previously, Jesus had encountered, had encountered a rich young man whose only problem was his riches, that he didn't wish to part with it. And that's why Jesus said in, uh, in Luke chapter 3 and verse 8 that that young man would never enter the kingdom of heaven. Zacchaeus was thrilled to be able to share with Jesus how he was turning his life around. What, if anything, are you and I holding on to? What God is saying, let it go and come, follow me. I'd like to refer back to Luke 3, verses 8 through 14. But I'll only highlight verse 12. Then collect tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, Teacher, they were talking to John the Baptist, What shall we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than what is appointed for you. They were not content with only being baptized. They wanted evidence to show that they had been spiritually transformed. Could it be that Zacchaeus was in that group that were baptized by John the Baptist? Perhaps he also knew Matthew, who before he was called by Jesus was also a tax collector. The plot thickens. Let's look at Luke 19 verse 8. And we'll notice as we read on in the passage, it says, and I want you to notice this. Look, Lord, I give. He didn't say, I'm going to give. He says, I give half my goods to the poor. And if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. Zacchaeus responded in the present tense, which is telling us that he has been and will continue to restore what he had stolen from his fellow man. Zacchaeus was repentant. He may have already answered the call to repentance. If he was one of those tax collectors that were baptized by John the Baptist, no dramatic conviction happened. For your salvation, you do not need to experience a lightning bolt or some other drama to occur at the moment you accept Jesus. All you need to do is to accept and trust in Jesus as your Savior and Lord and believe in him. As we go further into the story, my curiosity peaked. So why did Jesus invite himself to Zacchaeus' home? I believe that Jesus wanted to make an example of Zacchaeus to the condemning crowd. He wanted to show that being born 
a child of Abraham, Zacchaeus is now living it. He is now promoting social and economic justice. He is restoring what he illegally took from the poor and the marginalized. I believe Zacchaeus was seeking Jesus to share with him how he was following the rules as a true child of Abraham and perhaps was waiting for Jesus to evaluate his lifestyle, which was restoring back what he took from people. He didn't want to be stereotyped anymore as a crooked tax collector. Jesus recognized that Zacchaeus had conducted himself as a true child of Abraham. And this is exactly what happened as stated in uh, Luke 19 verses 8 to 9. It says, Look, Lord, I give half my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. It may seem that Zacchaeus thought he was seeking Jesus, but actually it is Jesus who was seeking him all along. Luke 10.10 10 says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. The story of Zacchaeus, like the parable of the lost son and others found in the Gospel of Luke, finds that restoration and transformation was needed in the end. This is exactly what salvation means in this story. We have a God who seeks, not a people who seeks. We have a Savior who wants a meal in our kitchen, not an emotional experience or repentance and conversion. That will come eventually as that glimpse grows to a full knowledge of who Jesus Christ is in our lives. Can I pause and ask you, what have you given up for Jesus? Is it to be a true follower? Zacchaeus, as he went about collecting taxes, may have caught a glimpse of Jesus and wanted to know more, and now that he heard that Jesus was coming to Jericho, he put forth the effort to see God, and guess what? God noticed what he did. Nothing was going to stand in his way, not his stature, his reputation, being a hatred tax collector, nothing. Did you catch how Jesus addressed him by his name? Zacchaeus, come down from there. I ask you, does God know your name? For knock, I'm sorry. For Zacchaeus, salvation came knocking that day. How many days have, salva have salvation come knocking and seeking you. Revelations 3 chapter 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. It is time for you to come down from your sycamore tree to not only having caught a glimpse of Jesus, but to have him come into your home, fully into your life, and make that change that will transform your life forever. But this will not happen if you're not seeking him and developing that close relationship with him, which is the key to help you change your lifestyle. You'll have to be intentional 
and put yourself in the position to catch life-changing glimpses of Jesus and great things will follow you as you heed his call. This question, what is my purpose? Why am I here? I'm on what many term as the Christian journey, but I'm not sure that I'm doing what is necessary to experience growth in my spiritual life. I keep on hearing, you must develop a closer relationship with God. But how do I do that? What does that look like? How can I make this happen in my life? Can you allow me to give you six little hints that I believe will help you build that closer relationship with God? Let's start with talking to him. Yes, just as with any other person in your life, communication is essential to strengthening your relationship with God. This means that you must engage in prayer regularly because that's how we communicate with God. A fast pre-learned prayer will not do. Pour out your thoughts, thanks, and desires of your heart. Jesus is your friend. You develop relationship with a friend through constant communication. Next, are you being obedient? In obeying and doing God's will, we become stronger in spirit, integrity, and mind. So beside talking to him, we must be obedient to him. Reading and meditating on God's word will certainly bring us closer to God. John 1 says, in, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. God's word has all the answers to life's questions. It tells us about the God we say that we love, that we worship, and that we adore. We need to read the book. Jesus once said, they worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. How can you say, I love God and I worship him? but you are not studying the word. Therefore, the word is not in you because you are not in the word. The word that tells us all about who he is, Psalm 119, 105 tells us, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You don't know the word, then you don't know God. My next hint is listen for him. In this area, many people fall short. We come with a long laundry list when we come to pray, but how much time do we spend listening to the answers that God may have for us at that moment? Take time to really stay quiet in your prayer moments. You may hear an answer from God to one or more of your requests. He answers questions. Give directions. Next, show gratitude to God that you are thankful to him for his many blessings. Need I go any further on that point? In everything and for all things, give thanks. Be mindful. What do I mean? Be mindful of God's presence in your life. He's always there. He says in his word that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Be humble 
and show reverence and, ex and respect for God. We are always in his presence. Never forget that. He sees all because and then nothing is hidden from him. And the last point, I had six of them. It says we must talk to him, obey, read and meditate on the word, listen for him, show gratitude, be mindful of his presence. Can you relate to Zacchaeus? Are you willing to do anything different in order to see Jesus more clearly? What is clouding your vision? Is it the crowd around you, the reason you can't see Jesus clearly? Are you keeping the wrong company, those that may lead you away from following Jesus? instead of having a closer walk with him? When Christ looks at you and calls your name, are you ready to respond or do you look away, not wanting, not ready to follow him, saying, I may miss out on all the fun that is going on in the world right now. Friends, Jesus is passing by. Catch a glimpse of him. If your heart is open and receptive, prepare for a change, a transformational change in your life. He may, he may visit you today. What will your response be? I pray that you will make haste and invite him in. God bless you all. But before I close, in this part, I would have liked to have another song for you. But instead, I'm going to say the words for you because I really would like for you to hear what it is these words of this song is saying. The name of it is he knows just how much we can bear. We are our Heavenly Father's children, and we know that He loves us, one and all. Yet there are times when we answer another voice and call. If we are willing, he will teach us his voice only to obey. No matter what, no matter where, he knows. Yes, he knows just how much we can bear. Though the load gets heavy, you're never left alone. To bear it all, ask for the strength and keep on toiling though the teardrops fall. You have the joy of this assurance. The Heavenly Father will always answer prayer. And yes, He knows. He knows how much we can bear. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Lord God, we thank you for your word that went forth. We ask, oh, Father God, that those who heard the word, Lord God, that there was something there that may have touched their hearts, Lord God, and that would have bring them closer and closer to you in love and in fellowship. We pray, oh, Father God, that your word has gone forth with power and with your authority, Lord God. Because we, as your servants, Lord God, seek to do your will and your purpose and what it is that you have laid on our hearts to share with your people. Bless us all today, Lord God, and be with us until we can meet again face to face. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you for listening. Thank you for having me share with you the word of God. Amen.